guys, welcome back to Empower In. My name is Carolyn Poirier Thomas. Thank you so much for watching. So I have a confession to make. I really wanted to research a topic um, of septic shock. So I figured in the process of doing my own research so that I can improve my life, why not make a video for you guys so you can learn a lot about it too. I know that septic shock is going to be something that you're going to learn in nursing school and I know for sure that you will see this a lot on the job because early recognition is becoming a high priority. So I really hope that this video does help you a lot. Also, if you want, uh, we created some NCLEX style questions for you and you can also pick up the audio for free. If you look below in the description section of this video, you can see how you can get those both right away. One last thing that I wanted to mention is I'm going to have a little giveaway. So there is this cute little name tag holder that I'm going to be giving away. It is handmade by a fellow nurse who I've met and I really admire. She makes the most beautiful little name tags. I have one, mine is a little turtle. And you know, when I first saw a lot of different name tags, I wasn't really interested in having one myself. I thought they were a little bit cheesy. But when I saw hers, I, I really just loved them and I have to say that it brings so many smiles to my patients faces so stay tuned until the end and you can find out how you can get one for free so without any further ado let's get started and let's go over septic shock septic shock is a life-threatening condition that is characterized when your blood pressure drops to dangerously low levels due to an infection this infection causes an extreme immune response that spreads throughout the blood and tissues. Sepsis occurs when the body's natural immune response is overwhelmed, causing chemicals to be released into the bloodstream, which causes an inflammatory response throughout the body. This inflammation can trigger a multitude of changes that can damage multiple organ systems, causing them to fail. Pathophysiology During an infection, certain types of bacteria can produce and release molecules called endotoxins, which may may stimulate a dramatic response in the body's immune system. When released into the bloodstream, endotoxins are particularly dangerous because they can become widely dispersed and affect the blood vessels. Arteries can dilate, which causes them to open wider while increasing the total volume in the circulatory system. This can lead to the walls of the blood vessels to lose their integrity and become leaky, eventually allowing fluid to seep out into the tissues. This lowers the amount of fluid left in circulation. This combination of increased volume and decreased fluid in circulation causes a dramatic decrease in blood pressure. The drop in blood pressure hinders the heart's ability to supply the vital organs with adequate blood. Without an ample amount of oxygen-rich blood, the brain, heart, kidneys, liver, and other organs cannot function properly. This can lead to multiple organ dysfunction syndrome. In addition to multiple organ dysfunction sy syndrome, another immune response may cause coagulation of the blood in the extremities, which can further decrease the circulation to the organs. Causes of septic shock. Any type of infectious agent, such as bacteria, virus, or fungus, can lead to sepsis. The most likely varieties include pneumonia, bloodstream infections, kidney infections, urinary tract infections, and abdominal infections. In most patients, these infections do not cause major complications, which would lead to sepsis. However, sometimes bacteria spreads into the bloodstream. This condition is known as bacteremia, after which sepsis may then develop. Risk factors. Certain groups of people are considered high risk for developing shock. This is usually due to a weaker immune system. Sepsis is more common and dangerous if you are elderly, a newborn baby, a pregnant woman, a patient with a long-term health condition and comorbidities such as diabetes, cirrhosis, or kidney failure, a person with a lowered immune system such as people with HIV or AIDS or those receiving chemotherapy, a patient with an injury such as a burn, or a patient who has an invasive foreign device such as intravenous catheters, urinary catheters, drainage tubes, and breathing tubes. Also, if the initial infection involves a collection of pus, the risk for bacteremia and sepsis increase. Signs and symptoms include refractory hypotension, which is low blood pressure that does not respond to treatment, lethargy or confusion, difficulty breathing, a rapid heart rate, cold, pale arms and legs, extreme weakness and lightheadedness, and nausea and vomiting. Diagnosing sepsis can be extremely challenging because its signs and symptoms can be caused by other disorders. 
often many different tests are run to try to pinpoint the underlying infection. Some common diagnostic tests ordered include blood cultures to identify the infectious agent, a CBC especially to check the white blood cell count and platelet level, a lactic acid is a blood test that measures the level of lactic acid made in the body. When this is elevated, this could indicate a severe infection. PT, PTT, and INR tests to test blood clotting ratios, AST, ALT, and serum bilirubin to test liver function, BUN and creatinine to test kidney function, and a blood gas to test for impaired oxygen absorption. Microbiology tests can include a urine culture, a wound culture if your patient has a wound that appears to be infected, respiratory culture if secretions or cough is present. In some cases, the source of the infection is still not clear, and an internal view of the body using one of the following imaging tests may be necessary. X-rays are good for visualizing lung diseases. CT scans will show a view of a possible infection of internal organs, including the liver, kidneys, and appendix, pancreas, bowel, or other areas. An ultrasound may also show visualization of internal organs. And MRIs allow to visualize any soft tissue infections. Vital signs and lab results that may suggest organ failure include a temperature greater than 100.4 or less than 96.8, a heart rate greater than 90 beats per minute at rest, a respiratory rate greater than 20 breaths per minute at rest, a white blood cell greater than 12,000 or less than 4,000, an oxygen saturation 90% or below, a systolic blood pressure less than 90 or MAP less than 65, or urine output less than 0.5 milligrams per kilogram per hour, or a creatinine increase greater than 0.5 from baseline, a lactic level greater than or equal to 4, and a platelet count less than 100,000, or an INR greater than 1.5, unless the patient is receiving Coumadin therapy. And finally, a serum bilirubin that is greater or equal to 4, which is new onset. Treatment. The earlier sepsis is diagnosed and treated, the higher their survival rate. Once sepsis is diagnosed, the patient will most likely be admitted to an intensive care unit for closer monitoring and aggressive treatment. Medications. A number of different medications are used in treating sepsis. They can include IV antibiotics, which begin immediately, even before the infectious agent is identified. Initially, a broad spectrum antibiotic will be given. Then, once culture results are available, the antibiotic can be switched to a more appropriate one. Inotropic agents and vasopressors can also be used. These medications can cause blood vessels to narrow, increasing the blood pressure and blood flow around the body. This will allow proper perfusion to vital organs. These agents will also increase the cardiac contractility, which helps the heart pump stronger. Such drug names include dopamine, dobutamine, and epinephrine. Other medications can include corticosteroids for inflammation and insulin to help maintain stable blood sugar levels. Large amounts of fluid will also be administered to prevent dehydration and increase the blood pressure. Sometimes up to 30 milligrams per kilogram of a normal saline bolus will be given over one hour. That is a lot of fluid. Surgical intervention may be necessary to remove the cause of the infection. For example, a draining collection of pus or abscess or removing infected or dead tissue. Outlook. Septic shock has a high mortality rate. The death rate depends on the patient's age, overall health, the cause of the infection, and how many organs have failed and how quickly and aggressively medical therapy was started. So now let's go over some NCLEX style questions so you can gain further understanding. Question number one. As the nurse receives laboratory results with a client admitted for sepsis, which of the following values needs to be reported to the physician immediately? A, neutrophils 50%, a platelet count of 200,000, a D-dimer of zero, B, an INR of one, a PT of 11, or PTT of 25, or C, a platelet count of 400,000, a PT of 9.5, neutrophils 70%, or D, an INR of 3.5, a D-dimer of one, a platelet count of 95,000, and a WBC count of 19,000. For this answer, I really have to go straight to the correct answer, which is D. This question is testing your ability to recognize which lab values are representing hematologic dysfunction in sepsis, which include increased bleeding times, a positive D-dimer thrombocytopenia, which means low platelets, and an abnormal white blood cell count, which normal is about 5 to 11,000, so you can see a level of 19,000 is really elevated. Question number two. 
Which of the following tasks can the nurse delegate to the nursing assistant? A. Assisting a client with acute gastroenteritis and brushing his teeth. B. Taking vital signs of the septic client during the first 15 minutes following a transfusion. C. Administering the third dose of albumin infusion. Or D. Changing the soap dressing of a client who has just undergone a thyroidectomy yesterday. Delegating tasks to a nursing assistant involves non-invasive interventions, such as skin care, ambulation, grooming, and hygiene measures. Nursing assistants can take vital signs, however, not the first vital signs following the start of the transfusion. These should be done by a registered nurse. Nursing assistants cannot give medications or change dressings, so the correct option here would be option A, assisting a client with acute gastroenteritis and brushing his teeth. Question number three. The physician has ordered a Meekin for the septic client. The nurse monitors for which irreversible adverse effect of this medication. A, loss of appetite, B, nausea, C, diarrhea, or D, deafness. One thing that you have to know about antibiotics known as immunoglycosides is that they are ototoxic, which means that they can damage hearing. So the correct answer would be D, because aminoglycosides induce ototoxicity by damaging the tiny hair cells in the cochlea. Often this damage is permanent. All right guys, I really hope you like this video. I know that the information is a bit complicated, but like I said, we do have additional resources for you. So again, just look below in the description section. You can see how you can get additional questions and an audio version of this video right away. And as for the giveaway, all you have to do to win a beautiful little handmade name tag holder is to give this video a thumbs up, post a comment below and tell me something positive. You can post a video request, you can post your favorite quote you can just say hi if you want and all I need to do is see a comment and lastly just subscribe to this channel so three things and I typed everything below just to make it easier for you as well the giveaway will be completely random but it is international so wherever you are from whatever country you're from go ahead and try to win because I'll send it to you wherever you are all right again guys I really hope you like this video and I can't wait to see you again soon I love you bye